Like the simple cup of tea or the English custard cream, Parker has just been one of those symbols of England that you always attribute to England, associating it with English excellency and freedom. And um... Afternoon tea time. Parker. I've already done a review on this. This is the Parker... This is the Parker Sonnet. This is their medium range pen. It's not expensive as the Duofold, and of course, I don't have the Duofold, but it has a pretty good reputation. The pen that I'm actually reviewing today is their cheap pen. This is the Parker Vector. Unlike the Parker Sonnet, which you'd pay about $150 going up, depending on which sort of nib you get, this pen will only run you about $14. So, this pen, wearing a arrow clip that's not a fake, this has a lot of company history behind it, so does it stand up to some of the great pens? At $14, which is what I picked this pen up for, you're going to be paying a lot less than you would be for pens such as the Lamy Safari or the Pilot Metropolitan, Pilot Prera and so on. But then again, you're also paying a lot more than you would be for a pen like this, the Jin Hao 992, which I picked off eBay for about two, two and a bit dollars. So, that puts it slap bang right in the middle. So upon receiving this pen, you are going to quickly realise that you aren't paying for Parker's top of the line pen. The Parker Sonnet, which comes in a wonderful padded box, is going to be unfortunately replaced with a cheap feeling and cheap looking box which if I'm honest doesn't even fit together well it doesn't send a good first impression before we jump into the proper pen review let's just talk about the dimensions first you're going to get a pen that's about 13 centimeters capped 11.4 centimeters uncapped and 15.5 centimeters posted weighing in at about 17 grams posted and 12 grams unposted. So this pen is a pen that you probably want to post and it's actually designed to be able to post. Um, the bit at the end is designed so you can pop the cap on and there will be no step up or change in the pen from the main body to the cap, which frankly is nice. I wish more companies did this. Um, when you post it, you have a really long pen that hopefully most people should be comfortable with. Um, in terms of the grip of the pen, this is where a lot of people have severe issues with this pen and can either make or break it with this pen. The issue is, while you do have a long grip with the pen, the nib is really small, which forces you to hold the uh, pen right at the back of the grip. And at the back of the grip, there is a large step down between the body and the grip of the pen. And unfortunately, it is a sharp step down, which is really uncomfortable. And after a while of using it, can actually dig into your finger, which is not fun at all, especially when you're writing for a couple of minutes. And it wouldn't be such an issue if it was sharp. But it really is sharp. So what I actually did after a couple of days of using this was get some P400 sandpaper and just sand this edge down because it was really starting to bug the hell out of me. Um, apart from that, that is the only ergonomic issue that I have with this pen. So if you like thin pens, this is really good if you can probably get over the step down. Let's talk about the actual pen itself. This pen is really nice. It's made from plastic and frankly I think looks really nice, though it, is pretty, though it is pretty subjective. If you have a look at the threads of the pen, it has metal threads and on the inside of the barrel it is plastic threads. Um, because it has metal threads, I'm going to say it's strong. You should be able to put it in your back pocket and lean on it and it should be fine. And I'll also guarantee that it will be fine if you use the stainless steel version. Because it is, because it has metal threads, unfortunately you can't use it as an eye dropper, which is a shame. But I'm pretty sure the Parker cartridge holds enough ink. This one will get me through about two to three days worth of use on the fine nib. The body itself is pretty high quality. I've been using it for about a month and a half now 
and there aren't that many scratches. They're very light scratches and that's something that you really want to note when you're using a plastic pen. Let's talk about the nib of the pen because it's the nib of the pen that really elevates this pen in my opinion. This has the fine nib which is a European fine so closer to a Japanese medium and the nib is really what makes me want to use this pen every day because the issue that I have with these Chinese fountain pens is reliability. They have reliability issues um, such as hard starts and ink flow when you're using the pens for extended periods of time. This pen however is really really reliable. I can stop using this pen for over a week and come back, start writing with it and it will work like that. Oh that was terrible. Reliability is really what I can commend this pen on. It may not be the most fun nib to write with, but this nib will get the job done. And speaking of it being not the most creative nib, um, yeah, it's pretty standard if you look at it. It says Parker on it, and above the Parker there's going to be the slit, and a lack of a breather hole. Which also means that this is an incredibly stiff nib. You, you won't get much line variation out of this nib without risking springing this nib. Which is sort of unfortunate, though when you're trying to write for long periods of time, flex isn't really what you're looking for. In terms of wetness, this is a moderately wet pen and it will keep up with any amount of writing. So enough of me um, talking about this pen, let's actually just jump into a writing sample. All right, let's do a writing sample, see how the pen goes. We have the Parker Vector. This one has a fine nib, though it is a European fine nib. So, Japanese medium. The ink that we have is Lamy Turquoise, and honestly, I don't use blue anymore, I just use turquoise because I just think it's I Q U O I S E. Throw English out the window. Anyway, I use turquoise opposed to blue now because I think it looks a lot nicer. And I think I'm going to keep doing these dad jokes, because, uh, <laughs> why not? So a snake walks into a bar, and the bartender says, how'd you do that? Hope everyone gets that. So, writing sample went off pretty well. No hard starts, nothing went wrong. It was pretty nice to write with. Nib is smooth, nib is nice to work with. Um, ink flow stayed up and we got some nice variation in color with the ink. Um, in terms of nib flex, there is pretty much none. You could mistake this for a rollerball, though this is nicer to write with than a rollerball. In terms of fast writing, I can't do it, so... Yeah, it keeps up. It keeps up well. In terms of wetness, we're looking at a moderately wet pen. It's not a gush or anything, but um, it will certainly keep up. And in terms of uh, natural line variation, you're not going to get anything with this. Maybe a little bit, but it's nothing noticeable. These side strokes are... Whoops, that was my fault for that. Side strokes are a little bit thinner than down strokes, but it's nothing to brag about. Um, in terms of getting line variation out of this pen, 
you can, if you push down hard, then you're gonna get railroading. So I probably wouldn't push it. And in terms of trying to do writing with it, A, it'll just make your wrist hurt, and B, you're not gonna get much. It's, there's nothing to yell about. Though in terms of um, reliability, it's pretty good. As you can see here, it's been totally reliable. It's wonderful to write with. Um, in terms of reverse writing, hey, you can squeeze a little bit out. It's not the smoothest, though most reverse writing isn't terribly smooth, though it's a little bit thinner. Oh, a little bit thinner, though I don't like reverse writing. And that is about it. That's the writing sample for the Pilot Vector. So that sums up my review of the Parker Vector, a fountain pen that's right in the middle between really bad, unreliable Chinese fountain pens and more expensive fountain pens such as the Pilot Prera and the Lamy Safari. Honestly, if I didn't have all that much, you know, money that, that I was willing to spend on a fountain pen and didn't really want to get a Pilot Prera or a Lamy Safari, I'd be pretty happy to go with this pen. Is this pen as fun to use as, say, a Lamy Safari and the Pilot Prera slash Metropolitan? No, it isn't. Doesn't give line variation, doesn't give any flex or anything. But in terms of comparing it to a cheaper fountain pen from China, I honestly, I honestly think that if you're going to buy a cheap fountain pen from China and you want something that is definitely going to work, buy this, honestly. Like, I do say if you're going to get into fountain pens, do buy something from China. But if you really want to get into fountain pens and don't want to beat around the bush buying cheap fountain pens that may or may not work, I think this is awesome for 13 bucks, and of course you can buy this at a lot of department stores because, you know, it's a pilot. I think this is pretty good. So, thank you so much for watching.